Hey, today we are continuing our study of the King is Coming, of course, looking at the coming of Jesus Christ, both at the rapture and what is called the second coming or the second advent. We've been focusing this week on the third person of the unholy trinity, and that is the false, or as I'm calling him, the phony prophet. And we looked at the things that he does, how he is involved in this one world religion. He is the head of that. He rises to that position. And then in the Great Tribulation, the last three and a half years of that, we will find later on that, uh, that the Antichrist, the one world leader, uh, John refers to him as the Antichrist, that he destroys that church and this, this false prophet deceives people and directs them to worship um, the Antichrist and has an image made of the Antichrist, some type of image, we don't know what that is, uh, whether it's a statue or whatever it might be, uh, but he is the, the false prophet, the phony prophet is given the ability by Satan to cause that statue to breathe, not to have life, but to breathe, which makes people think he's alive, and to speak. And so uh, then there we got into it yesterday where he causes everyone uh, to worship this, and they had to receive the, the mark of the beast in their, ne in their forehead or in their right hand, and that is a brand of some sort or an imprint. Uh, it is clearly visible. It's not something invisible. It's something that is visible and can be readily seen and marked out. And um, today we're going to finish that up looking at uh, verse 17 and 18. This was, and he provides that no one should be able to buy or to sell except the one who has the mark, either the name of the beast or the number of his name. So it is either going to be some kind of name, the name of that person, or it's going to be some kind of number that's going to be on there. Is it a literal 666? I don't know. No one does, possibly. Uh, I don't think you can render a name from that to be certain of who that's going to be. That's a mystery. We'll not know that until after the rapture because he's not revealed until after the rapture. So if you're a believer, uh, you're not going to know who that is, at least not here on this earth. Now, that person may be alive right now. I happen to believe that Satan has to have someone ready to be that figure in every generation, just like there has to be someone who can be that false, phony prophet uh, to, in every generation as well, because Satan doesn't know when the rapture is. It makes sense, doesn't it? Anyway, so the point is, the choice is to worship this image or, in fact, worship the beast, which is ultimately worshiping Satan and rejecting the one true God or to worship the one true God and reject taking that mark, uh, that sign that you belong to the beast, that you belong to him, that you are a slave, that branding was often used of slaves in the first century, and so that you belong to them. And, and so it is a, it is a gross um, appropriation, misappropriation of the sealing of the Holy Spirit upon believers where this one causes a brand, a mark to be put on you that you belong to Satan, you belong to the Antichrist. Of course, nobody's going to say, oh, you belong to Satan. It's, no, you support this world leader and you support his program and you support what all he's about because it's for the good of everyone. Isn't it? And so that's everybody's going to go along with it, or at least most of the people will go along with it. The ones who don't won't be able to buy anything or to sell anything, and they won't be able to do that because they won't have the mark indicating that they go along with this. And so they won't be able to hold a job. Um, they will either be hunted down and killed, or they will be forced to flee, live off the land perhaps, or to live off the benevolence of or the kindness of some others, people will be turning them in because you can't, and it'll be for the good of everybody. They, they are dangerous and they must be hunted down. They must be eradicated. They must be stopped because that's going to destroy all these good things. And again, I'm sure that fear is going to play a big role. And you know, when people are afraid, they don't speak out. They don't because we're afraid. We don't want to say anything. And, and it's for our own good, isn't it? It's for our security and our safety, isn't it? Isn't that what we hear today? Well, you're going to hear it a lot more in the time of the Antichrist and the time of the tribulation. For the good of everyone, for the good of the world. All the brotherly love, all the compassion. Don't you care about your neighbor? That kind of thing. 
Well, in reality, they're going to be turning their neighbors in if they don't have the mark, and justly so, because they are tearing down everything good that this Antichrist is doing. Of course, he's not going to be known as the Antichrist. He's not going to be known as the counterfeit king or the phony prophet. They're not going to go by those names. Um, but that's what they'll be. And so I see so many parallels of what's happening today and how that could very easily lend into or blend into what's coming in the not-too-distant future, uh, as talked about in Revelation chapter 13. So you won't be able to buy. You won't be able to sell. You won't be able to do business. You won't be able to have a job. You won't be able to go to the store. You won't be able to go anywhere. You won't be able to go to a restaurant. Only those who either have the mark or the name of the beast on their foreheads or in their right hand. And he says, here is wisdom. Let him who has understanding calculate, figure it out, the number of the beast. For the number is that of a man. And his number is 666. Now, what does that mean? Well, I don't think, uh, I don't think it's the, the kind of thing where you take the numbers and they match a letter in the alphabet because John never does that anywhere else. He does use numbers as symbols. And, of course, the number seven is the number of perfection within Hebrew thought. The number six is the number of man, one short of seven. And I think that's what John is saying is to figure this out. This is not a spiritual being. This is not, this is not someone sent from heaven. This is not. He's a man's number, and it's three times, six, six, six. Then no matter how many times you carry that out, it's still short of perfection. It will never be seven. You can carry six out as far as you want to. It'll never be seven. Uh, seven is the perfect number. Six is man's number, and it falls short of seven. And so the only one who can uh, make man who is short of the perfection of God, the only one who can take care of that is God himself through the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross and his resurrection and the enablement of the Holy Spirit to rebirth in us the image of God, to recreate us and to bring us a new new creation. That That's the only way that man is ever going to be made into perfection and ever will be what we were created to be. On our own, we fall short of that and always will fall short of that. And this world leader um, falls short of perfection. They will promise the moon but deliver nothing. They will promise peace but deliver war. They will promise liberty but deliver chains and slavery. They will promise uh, health and deliver disease. They will promise security, but there will be fear and anxiety. That's what they will promise. And that's what humanity always promises, that in ourselves we don't need God. We can achieve this on our own. But the fact of the matter is we never have and we never will. The only one who's going to bring that kind of kingdom upon this earth is Jesus Christ when he comes in the second coming to reign in power and glory of the thousand-year reign, how remarkable that's going to be. And then after that, the new creation and, all, and that which we look forward to. It's going to be a horrible time. It'll be a time of slavery, a time of fear, a time of war, a time of destruction, a time of murder, um, a time of anxiety. Uh, it, it will be stressful, and there will be those, just like there are today, who rally around the government taking away their freedoms and so forth and say, yay, that's what needs to be done. In, in any tyrannical government there, there ever has been, that's what is always done. And we're doing this for your safety and your security. And it's for everyone's good. That's what the Nazis said about the Jews. They had to be taken away because they were destroying the purity of the Aryan race. That's what was said during Jim Crow in the South. You have to keep these separate because one would destroy the other, it would bring it down. And that's what's being said today. We have to separate people. We have to put people in different categories. It's for the good of everyone. It's for everyone's safety. And don't you care? That's what will be said, and it's what's being said today. And we'll see how it works out. My peace, my joy, comes from knowing God has already described all this. He's already talked about it all. He's told us the end from the beginning. He has told us what's going to happen. And we don't need to be afraid. If we're believers, we need not fear. We're not going to go through that. Thank God for the rapture. Jesus is going to come and take his bride out of that. We're not going to go through that tribulation period. That is not for the church. There will be believers who go through that, that are saved 
uh, during the tribulation period, and they will experience hardship like we haven't even begun to think about. Um, it will be a different world. There will be things in that will be weather patterns that are changed. There will be uh, sun and moon that's different. Uh, things will be different. Maybe uh, maybe the global warming gets worse and worse. I don't know. But there will be catastrophic events that are taking place, and people will be fearful, and this guy is going to rise to power, and there will be this one world religion, and they will work together to bring around the empire. And it'll be a horrible state. And God has already told us that. I don't want anybody to go through that. So we as believers, what should we do? Take comfort or know that we're not going through that. But secondly, be motivated to tell others about Jesus Christ, to speak Christ into people's lives before it's eternally too late, before anyone has to go through that. And we don't want anyone to miss being rescued out of that. And so uh, uh, we need to show forth God's love each and every day and the peace that comes from knowing Christ Jesus. We don't need to be afraid. We have assurance and certainty of what's coming and that we've been rescued out of it and that Jesus is coming for us. We don't have to worry about that. And so in the midst of all the crazy, you can have security, you can have assurance that all is well. God is working it out and he's got a plan and he's carrying it through. Uh, and I think this old world is gonna be unraveling before too long. I might not see the rapture, at least not here on earth, but maybe I will. I pray that I get to see it. Um, but I'll be a part of it one way or the other. Either I'll come with him or I will be caught up together with him in the air if I'm still here upon this earth. So I look forward to it, and I pray that you do too. But the way that you look forward to it is knowing Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Hey, listen, God loves you. He gave his son Jesus that you might have forgiveness of sin, eternal life, and joy indescribable right here and right now, and I pray that that's yours. Hey, listen, if you don't have a church home, I'd love to see you here at Troy First Baptist Church. We worship at 9 o'clock. We're back in the sanctuary. Worship at 9 o'clock. Small groups of Sunday school. Um, we have a class for everybody, a fellowship group for everybody. Um, that starts at around 10, 15. Uh, depends on how long the preacher goes on Sunday mornings. Uh, but we'll be tying all this stuff together about the false prophet. We'll be looking at that this Sunday and, and wrapping all that up. And uh, then we'll move on from there. But if you don't have a church home, we'd love to see you here. Uh, and if I don't see you here, then I will see you Monday. And I pray God's blessings on you always. May God's shalom rest upon you till I see you again. Till then, God bless you.